why do we use slant 45 in antenna theory? Keep it simple. So I think I'm going to start with the end on this video first. So um, did you know that if you were to send a signal at 45 degrees, in other words, if your antenna is aligned to 45 degrees rather than straight vertical or horizontal like we used to, your reflections will actually be cross -ball. Have a look at the demonstration I did, which is basically the end of the video, but I want to show it first. So first of all, I have a setup where I just take my transmission, my transmitter, my radio, which in this case is basically just a recorded video from a projector, and I send it straight to the wall. As you can see on the left, there is my laptop, so that's the original signal, and the, the transmitted signal that's also on the wall there is your normal 45 degree signal. Now, if I just flip my transmitter down so that I actually just look at the reflected wave, the reflection from the mirror, which in this case would be water, could be ground or anything, that signal, look at that, it is turned by 45 degrees. So on the laptop on the left you could see what the main signal is, so what I am expecting to see on the other side. On the reflected signal, which is now the projected signal going via the mirror, is cross pole, it's slant 45. Now, that's the baseline for this video. And that's now the question that you're probably going to ask me. Why is this important? Why do we don't, well, why do we not use slant 45 everywhere? Now, the first thing is, I'm again going to start from the second question first. Why don't we use slant 45? Here is a video of your classic vertical polarized antenna. In this case, it's the LPDA that I used that I recorded on the beach. I painted it with red and white so you could see what's up and down or positive or negative. The main signal is going forward. It's transmitted, as you can see on the laptop on the left. That is the signal. That's what I'm projecting. That's my transmission. What I see on the screen is the same video because that's the main one going from me to the actual receiver on the other side. Now, if I take my projector and I actually just look at the reflected wave, in other words I take the signal down towards the mirror and then forward, it is upside down. That's basically it. So the reflected wave in this instance is upside down to my main. This happens in real life as well. Why do we see that? Because you could almost think about school physics where we learned about interference. You can have constructive and destructive interference. Um, I remember in my school days we basically had two combs, so we just overlaid them and you could see as you overlay them, it goes, you see them, you don't see anything, you see them, you don't see anything. That principle is also sometimes called fading, it is interference, la da da, it's called all sorts of things, but basically the same signal goes and there's a reflected one over the ocean that can be 100% out of phase and you will have a problem, you will get a null value at the receiver end. Now this is an important one that I always want to call out to all my signal processing friends. This happens in physics world. The transmission, once it leaves the antenna till it gets to the other antenna, before you can do any signal processing. In other words, the problem with the actual energy is it gets reduced because of the phase differences. And at this point, if you just have one antenna going this way to that way, you have this problem where fading will happen. Many people would say, well, can I take my chances? How likely is this to happen? Again, this principle needs to be used in anywhere where wireless technology is. Marine is the classic example. This is why I have a mirror. It's the extreme example and it happens on boats all the time. It will also happen on land because land will have reflections. It happens in cities because there's walls and buildings everywhere that will reflect. You will see it in anything, in tunnels, so forth. So no matter what industry you are in, if you are in marine, consumer, defense, mining, this is a principle that's physics that you need to know and be aware of. I feel this is the first time I could show it on screen with this projector that I'm showing there, all the effect, effects that can happen. Why do we use vertical all the time? Think about the boating circumstances and think about a classic omni antenna, it's a dart pole. A dart pole is just a tube like this, has an omni pattern everywhere. It is vertically linear polarized. That's the way it is, that's the classic, most sensible, simplest antenna that you can use. So, vertical makes a lot of sense because it's physically the easiest and most common antenna that you would use. But it comes with the problem of the reflections causing trouble. Now, 
if you were to use horizontally polarized antennas, and I'm just looking around my neighborhood here, the TV antennas are all horizontally polarized, that has similar effects, but it has no effect visually on the reflection. So as you can see on my demonstration there in the actual um, uh, workshop that I did, I have the main signal, as you can see on the screen, it is just looking from left to right and my red and white is aligned. On the actual projected screen, you see the same one. But then if I face it down towards the actual um, mirror, it's still the same antenna, it looks the same, so the signal is roughly the same. You can see it's upside down because the sky is now bottom and this, the beach is at the top, so things have flipped, but it doesn't, didn't really flip significantly. Making a horizontally polarized antenna for Omni is going to be really, really challenging. You have a dipole, if you put it on its side, you will have nulls in this direction, so it's no longer an Omni. It gets used, but you will need to use multiple antennas to still have that coverage all around you. So it's not necessarily the best way to do this. Then that brings us to the Slant 45 situation, and you will see many 4G, 5G antennas, if you look at the ones that get ad ad advertised, if you look at the, the antennas themselves, people would say plus minus 45. If you look at some systems, maybe in other applications as well, slant 45 plus and minus, so you have two antennas facing same direction forward, such as the LPDAs that we have on our website as well. There is a good reason for that, not just to get um, kind of coverage in all dark polarizations, but also because of the artifact that I could show you again. Same video as I had at the beginning of the video. Um, again, so the main signal at 45, you can see on the computer screen as well, it's at 45. If I look at the reflected, it is flipped to the other polarization. Now, why this is useful is it means that my antenna on the receiving end is still only able to see the main signal the other antenna, which may be at the slant 45, it will see the reflected wave, but that's then where the signal processing team will say, okay, I can deal with this. I have two distinct signals coming in. I can discern them. I know what to do with one or the other. They're not coming into the same antenna anymore, in other words, to the same receiver, and then they have to decipher something that is by physics already completely um, compromised and, and probably reduced in physical, well, physical size or of the amplitude of the signal itself. And this then is probably my, my world, the favorite way to add diversity to systems. So diversity is the word that you use a lot. If you have a two by two MIMA or even these days four by four, and I see now eight by eight is coming out for, for 5G um, as well. Uh, not necessarily eight by eight, but eight by eight with multiple carriers and multiple rub modems. Um, you have various ways to introduce diversity, antenna world diversity. One is spatial diversity. So you have an antenna up and down. If you can try to have them at different heights, it helps. When a boot, boot, boat is moving, you at least will have different reflections at any given time. Another diversity is simply to space them apart. By spacing them apart as the boat is moving, the reflections that this antenna will see is different than the one this one will see. Now, unfortunately, in marine world, getting an Omni to be slant 45 is quite complicated. Um, in fact, it's probably not cost efficient for the consumer space. Um, but polarization diversity, having an antenna at this angle, having an antenna at this angle, or in an Omni case, you use some form of polarizer to have the antenna pick up one polarization and the other, is a very powerful technique, probably more relevant in the um, more defense kind of industry um, for that specific reason. Um, that's pretty much what I can say about that. So I hope this kind of makes sense. Um, from an antenna design perspective, Slant 45 is extremely powerful and to understand this when you design systems more on the uh, implementation side of things, it is a very, very useful tool to keep in mind. The physics doesn't lie. Interesting enough, the um, the baseline for how this works is, uh, is actually in the first course I ever did in electromagnetics, so the third year um, EM course, this was already there, but you didn't realize it's there until you actually see this artifact happen, and then you come back and say, hang on, this is a useful concept I could use to try and reduce my um, exposure to uh, fading or um, diffraction and reflections. Now, 
actually I forgot to mention something. So one thing that you could ask is, well, what's the likelihood? Can I take my chances that this may not happen? The thing is, it happens within a wavelength. Now, let's say we look at one gigahertz, which is basically uh, on the lower band of, of 4G signals. Um, it's already higher on what the people use, there's 700 megahertz and so forth. The wavelength is 30 centimeters. Having an antenna move through that cycle of that space, 30 centimeters, will get you interferences constructive and, def and destructive and, and nullify all happen in that space. So if you have a marine, a boat or something rocking, the likelihood of where your antenna is that it will spatially move through 30 centimeters as the boat rocks is probably 100%. The boat will go, will go through fading, you will see the problem. And if, it's a, if there's an easy way to overcome that problem, maybe in, in any type of application, but just using Sloan 45, why wouldn't you? It's a simple solution. It's complicated to implement, but once you understand it, you may be also quite keen to see if you could implement this in your system. That's about it. Now I'm done. Thanks for watching. Um, see you on the next video soon. Cheers, bye-bye.